Hi, Barbara Grassi here, The Book Boss, and I am showing you today how to write your book in three days. You know, Voltaire wrote Candide in three days, and guess what? He wrote it in French, so you should be able to do it in English really well. Uh, and actually, Voltaire didn't write Candide in three days. That's a modern writing myth, but what the heck, it's fun. Um, I'm going to teach you the Dave Lacani method. I met Dave uh, years ago at an internet marketing seminar and went out to one of his, actually I've gone to several of his seminars, he's got great information. And one of the times I went out to his seminar, he taught us how to do a book in three days. So a little bit about Dave, I like to give credit where credit is due. He's a turnaround business consultant, uh, best-selling author of Persuasion, The Art of Getting What You Want, Power of an Hour, Subliminal Persuasion, which I think I edited, uh, and several other books. He is an internet marketer, and you can find him at boldapproach.com. Interesting, interesting guy. You also want to follow him on, on uh, Facebook if you can. So your book topic. First of all, your book topic is probably going to be what you work in, what you love to do, whether it's a hobby or a business. So you've got a book topic that you've decided on. I want to write a book on such and such. Grab about 15 sheets of paper, and then write your main topic on the first sheet of paper simple so far, right? Then you're going to come up with 10 to 15 subtopics on your subject, and these are going to become your chapter. So copy each subtopic onto its own sheet of paper, and from time to time glance at your main topic and make sure the subtopics actually go into that book. Sometimes we will want to put everything we know into a book and some of the material just doesn't belong in that particular book. So just check it against your main topic, make sure you're on track. So now you have 10 to 15 subtopics, which will become your chapters. Here it gets a little bit more intense. You want to write out 10 to 15 questions on each subtopic that people would like to or should know. And you need to go in depth on these questions. Think about what people want to know, what were the things you needed to know when, when you were just starting out, and really try to come up with what the most useful information is going to be for your reader. All the stuff they're going to want to know, all the stuff they need to know. And what people want and what they need are sometimes two different things, so you have to give them both. Now for the fun part. Have a friend interview you and record your answers to the questions digitally. So, and that's using a, a digital tape recorder, which I think does not make sense. Digital tape, I think, is an oxymoron. You can use your computer, which I love to use. You can use a service such as freeconferencecall.com. That's a free system. If your friend is in another area of the country and you can't get together, do it over the phone. So grab a smart friend. And I say a smart friend because you want a friend who's going to actually ask you additional questions uh, as well as the questions that you've set out. And those additional questions are going to be things like, I'm sorry, I don't understand how that works. Could you clarify that for me. Or you seem to have made a jump in logic here. How do you know that? The, you want somebody that's actually going to ask you additional questions rather just rotely read the questions. I had a client who got his wife to answer, to ask the questions for him and listening to the tapes, you could tell she did not want to spend time asking him interview questions. And so it was just a dead interview. And within, I think, uh, I think he had a six module course by the second module, he was asking himself the, que himself the question, which sounds really weird. So he's asking the question, then he's answering it. And the truth is, he was just whipping through it, and a lot of what he said was redundant. So you really need somebody who will keep you on track and somebody who will draw you out. So here's the fun part. Grab some coffee, some wine, or a couple of beers, but not too much wine or beer because you're going to start slurring, okay? <laughs> that makes it hard for the transcriptionist. But you want it to be relaxed. And the idea of sitting down with a friend is that a friend is someone you're comfortable with and conversation tends to flow. The best books are written in a me to you voice. So if you're talking to a friend, you've got exactly the right voice that you want for your book. And then record in 30 minute segments. The reason for this is twofold. One, 30 minute segments don't take as long to upload to a transcription company, which is our next step. If you're trying to upload hour long files, you can really slog down your machine. So record in 30 minute segments. The second reason is because 
Transcription companies can come back a lot faster for a 30-minute segment than if you send them four hours in one swell foop. So I love saying swell foop. So it's easier for the transcription company and your transcriptions come back more quickly. Okay, so now you delegate, right? Send those audio files to your transcriptionist. If you don't have one, my current favorite is Rev.com. They're very fast. I have never paid for a 24-hour turnaround because they get their stuff back to me so fast. Not always right in 24 hours, but 24, 48 hours is pretty, pretty normal for them. Uh, if you need a transcription company, just go onto Google, type in transcription companies, and you will get tons of them. The average price for transcription right around now is a dollar a minute, $60 an hour, and that is for recorded minute. You do not want to pay a transcriptionist for how long it takes them to transcribe the audio. You want to pay them per recorded minute, otherwise you're going to lose a leg and an arm. So Rev.com is the clear winner for me right now. You can pay more if you want it back faster, but for the most part, they get it back pretty fast. Now it's the hard part. I'm not going to lie to you. You need to edit the transcriptions into an ebook, a book, or a manual. And straight transcriptions do not equal a book. You're going to have places where the transcriptionist couldn't hear what you said. You will have places where they misunderstand a word. I do a lot of real estate investing manuals and books, and there's a thing called REIA, R-E-I-A. It's a real estate investors association. And if you don't spell it out for the transcriptionist, it will always come back as area. So, <laughs> so those are simple, and you know, they don't know jargon. They might not know uh, technical terms. So if you're using a technical term, spell it out for them if you can. If not, just keep an eye out for that in the transcriptions. As you're reading through, look for anything you might have left out when you were doing the interviews. Look for things that you repeated. I find a lot of authors kind of get lost in the weeds and they circle back around and repeat the same information. And finally, once you realize you've got all the content that you have, you've, you, you've got what you need in your book, you need to check it for spelling, grammar, punctuation, and continuity. That is, do the things fall in logical order? Do you talk about something and refer to something that you haven't yet mentioned? So make sure it's in a good logical order. And really, when you're writing out your questions, you might go back, at, back, go back through your questions before you even do the interview and make sure those are in a logical order. You want to make it as easy as possible to edit the transcript into your book. And this takes a little bit of time. Don't let that three-day fool you. Okay, it's simple, but it's not easy. So how do you publish it? You can create a simple PDF and make it an ebook. You can upload it to Kindle. Very easy. It comes with instructions. Or you can use createspace.com or some other print-on-demand publisher. You're going to want a cover for your book, whether it's a simple PDF or not. I like to go to Fiverr for a real book, for a better book. I like to use a designer and designers can go anywhere from $200 to $500 and up. Some people pay thousands of dollars for their covers. I don't do that. I do have um, people that I use, people that have been recommended to me. You can also find cover artists on CreateSpace. You can find them on Elance, which is now Upwork.com. Or you can run a contest on 99designs and you will get some fantastic designs doing that. I think that runs about $200 or $300 to run, to run that on 99designs. You can get some great covers there. So it's simple, but it's not easy. It takes time. It takes concentration. Yes, you can write a book in three days. They're usually not the great American novel, just so you know. Uh, if you're trying to do this and you get stuck, if you need a little bit of help, we have strategy sessions, we have home study courses, we have VIP breakthrough days to help you out. Whatever level of service you need to get your book written, we can do that for you. Find out more at barbaragrassi.com. My blog is on there. I actually add to my blog every week. There are tips and there are checklists. So come on by barbaragrassi.com. Here's to writing your book.